Hello, I'm Maria. So for today, I want to share with you my personal experience on how I revised my GTE because I have seen a lot of refusals lately. So before I start reading my GTE, let's define what is GTE and what are the common mistakes associated with it. Gen 1 Temporary Entrant or GTE is a written statement made by the visa applicant stating that they intend to stay in Australia temporarily to gain an education and not use it as a channel to gain permanent residency in Australia. Moreover, you have to provide evidences of the information you give in your written statement. Common mistakes include not giving strong reason to return to your home country, choosing courses that can be found online, irregular educational history, and being stingy with their personal information, and more. Story time. I was given a questionnaire by my school and I answered it that it turned into three pages. However, I asked my cousin for an SOP advice since she's also going for studies in Canada. Due to my lack of research, I followed her advice, so I made my GTE into one to two pages without thinking that her course that she's taking is actually related to her previous experience while mine is not. Then I submitted my GTE with basic documents. Let me read to you my initial GTE. Dear Visa Officer, I am Maria Rualio, applying for a student visa. I was accepted at Blanc Institute in their 50-week certificate in early childhood education and care for July Blanc intake and 50-week diploma of early childhood education and care for July Blanc intake. I graduated in Blanc from University of Blanc with a bachelor's degree in business administration major in marketing management. After I had my studies, I worked as a blank in blank in the Philippines for three months as a relief for a blank. After my contract had ended, I tried to find myself another opportunity in the Philippines, but recruiters were only after fresh graduates for a short contractual work. In a few months, I received an invitation to work as a blank in Singapore, which I gleefully accepted. I started my career in Singapore as a blank in blank from November blank to November blank. Upon expiration of my contract, I moved to blank as a blank and worked there for a year and seven months. Later, starting from blank to Present, I have begun working in blank as a blank. In the meanwhile, after I had flown to Singapore, my parents encouraged me to take up master's degree, but I refused as I wanted to start working at a young age so I could earn money for me to build our family business someday in the Philippines. I believe that working in retail will also help me decipher which line I should take for my business. I have worked in clothing line, cosmetics, skincare, and many more, but none of those had interested me. So I thought of doing a business, food business, but every time I visit my hometown, there is something new with a food store near my place and I foresee that it would only get increasingly hard for us to compete. That's when one day my neighbor in the Philippines who finished studying early childhood education encouraged me to study early childhood education as she sees the growing need of this job in the Philippines. At the same time, my colleague in blank was also encouraged by her friend to study the said course as it's a fulfilling career and upon seeing the lack of daycare centers in my hometown, 
This has also helped me to consider early childhood education course. During my working experience from blank to blank, I have worked closely with ladies, have interacted a lot with them, and have gotten to know them better. I've seen women who are struggling to make time for their family being a career woman. Most of them have hired babysitters to look after their kids. I have known teens and seen young girls who were, who were not close with their mothers as their respective mothers are busy with their careers. Personally, I am a family girl. My family is always a priority to me, no matter what. All these have had me thinking a lot and I have been looking at various options to try and get myself a career where I could give time to my family and at the same time give me satisfaction of a good career. For over a year, I have wanted to change the line of my career and have been contemplating a few that I'd be interested in. Though I'm happy with my current job, there are few things that I want. I would like to have a work that will allow me to also look after my parents who are fast approaching their old days. I have siblings who can help me but they won't be able to look after them or spend as much as time sorry or spend as much time as my brother wants to work in blank while my sister plans to migrate to a city further away for her career. When I eventually get married, I decide to have family days during weekends, which would not be a possibility if I were to continue working in retail industry. I also have natural fondness for kids. My desire to want to take care of them made me feel that it's time I work towards what I love to do for our profession. And education and childcare will give me the opportunity of putting up our own family business back in the Philippines. Our family plan is to put up a small child daycare below our house. This would allow me to practice my business skills and utilize my knowledge that I would have gained through the childcare course that I'd be undergoing in the near future. This will serve us our investment and it would also give my parents a happy retirement life. As the population increases, with both parents usually working now, there is a growing need for these establishments. Child daycares have steadily boomed and have become profitable venture in the Philippines. The parents' awareness for the need to enroll their children in the centers has become a primary need and parents even start saving towards this. Considering the above wanted, I realized that studying diploma of early childhood education and care perfectly fits the need. We had our new president and he's now bringing to an end to contractual work in the Philippines. From that, I have realized that this might be the best time for me to quit my job in Singapore study for at least two years, work for a year in the Philippines to see the market while preparing for our business. My initial thoughts were to enroll for Diploma of Early Childhood Education and Care in Philippines, but my family were upbeat about the idea of me doing my studies abroad and it excited me further. I started to look for educational institutions in Singapore, but I learned from my colleagues in Singapore that if I studied from Australia, I would regard it high as it is well-renowned and highly recognizable worldwide. When I compared both countries, tuition fees were almost the same, but another good thing is if I study in Australia, it will help me to improve my English skills and will also help me to discover a new environment, so I decided to take up the course in Australia. I want to give myself the best education that I can in a short period of time. It's a huge decision considering that my education is what would help me down the line in my career aspirations. 
So I researched online and landed up on few finalists. Eventually settled with Blank Institute as I found good reviews and the course flow was impressive with all practical lessons included. When I returned to my country with an Australian degree, it would directly give me a high chances of securing a career and setting up our family business. So my future prospects are bright too and this degree, if completed in Australia, would easily make me stand clear of my competitors when I put up our own childcare in Philippines. It will be a win-win situation for me. I also stand to explain on why my intentions are purely for studies and I only enter Australia for temporary purposes. I have grown up in a culture that is richly family oriented. I have valued the older generations. I would love to look after my parents when they retire and would appreciate the opportunity to continue my career staying close to home. I also visit my hometown for twice or thrice a year. Even while I was working in Singapore, my plans were to return to my country before 20 blank so we can build our own family business and to look after my parents when they retire. Being the eldest child in my family, I am a natural heir to one of the lands my parents own in Philippines and I want to take care of the land along with other properties. I hope your I hope for your favorable reply to my request. Thank you very much. Respectfully yours, Maria Arwalio. <sighs> After two weeks, I received my refusal letter. So here it states. So from my refusal letter, I first identified what are the basis of my rejection and I took notes from it. Going back to my story, when I received my refusal letter, I told myself that I will just do what I think is best. That is to elaborate everything. Even if some are not part of the basis of my rejection, I still elaborated those, so my GTE will weigh heavily in most or all areas. Here is the questionnaire that I had to answer to construct my GTE. Actually, if you look closely into the questionnaire, it gives you a hints and tricks on how to make a good GTE. It's just that you have to research more to make it stronger. I wish to read you my last GTE, however, it is too long. So I will just tell you the points that I added. So here are the things that I added during my quick stay in the Philippines, especially during my GTE revision. I entered myself into a volunteer the teaching children. I stated that my interest of taking childcare was even right before I took my business course back in my country. I added the activities that I do on my spare time or vacations relating to children, teaching, playing, taking good care of them. I elaborated my reason of career change, especially with my future personal plans, future economy of Singapore, and my current situation in Singapore. I created a business plan and detailing how the course has a direct bearing and relevance to my current plans and future prospects. I even mentioned childcare centers in my area, daily operation, rates, and more. I explained the effects of me living in different country due to me being exposed to different environment, people, culture, and behaviors, 
and as to how it can benefit my future business. I mentioned about facts about Melbourne, weather, famous places to visit, activities, and more. I talk about my school. Details were from the school's website. I listed down all the schools that offer the same course in my country with its dates of classes start and explain their subjects being offered. From there, I chose one school and compared everything versus my preferred school in Australia. I just gave them the impression that I check all my options in Philippines. I elaborated differences of education system in the Philippines and Australia, including the teaching styles. I listed down what it takes to live in Australia, culture, weather conditions, monthly expenses, and more. I gave them the idea how I plan to live in Australia. Check my other video about ways to save money as I mentioned some of it too. Mention the conditions of student visa subclass 500. I added some prominent childcare centers in the Philippines and my plans of working in one of those. Take note, my home ties were just literally my aging parents, a possibility of inheriting a property, and my business plan. I made sure not to emphasize Singapore and other countries for studying, as well as other cities in Australia. I just focused on Australia and Melbourne only. I forgot to mention my refusal in my GTE, but I did mention it in my application. All of my claims in GTE have sources, proofs, and documentations. I hope all of these points can help you with your GTE revision for your relodging of visa. So don't give up. And please remember to do your own research. Thank you for watching this video. If you find this useful, please let me know in the comments. I'll see you on my next video. Bye!